and that is uh, where are we right now and the perception of this area, uh, where do we want to be, and how do we want to get there. And uh, we're going to have a myriad of opinions on that, which is a good thing. But I will tell you that the one thing uh, that, that maybe we need to sort of put the rest is the fact that this community will stay the same. Because, ladies and gentlemen, it will not stay the same. It will change. So we have to decide how we want it to change. Fair enough? Thank you so much for your participation tonight. I'll turn it over to Aaron Burke. Thank you, Lee. And I'm going to come on this side of the projector so I don't constantly walk in front of it and blind myself. Um, I just want to thank you all for being here tonight. Um, as Lee said, my name is Erin Burris. I work with Benchmark um, in Kannapolis. I've been the, the zoning administrator and planner for the town of Bermuda Run and its planning area um, for almost two years, actually, in the come this July. Um, we also have on our team solar architecture and Miller landscape architecture. Um, and those folks are here tonight to sort of go through some of the topics we're going to be discussing as well. Um, in case you haven't noticed, there are some refreshments over here for anyone who's thirsty or would like a cookie. Um, we have those, and then the restrooms are straight out this door for anyone who needs those as well. Um, everyone has a name tag on, which is great, so we'll know your name. But the folks with the red name tags, those are the meeting facilitators. So if you see someone with a red name tag on, just and if you have a question, feel free to ask them a question. Um, when we get into the topics, those folks are also going to come and sit at your tables with you to sort of help you through the discussions. But um, uh, as Lee mentioned, we are working on a comprehensive plan. Well, what is a comprehensive plan? Uh, it helps guide nearly everything that a local government is responsible for on a daily basis. Um, and they have specific subject areas with a framework for implementation. It's not just um, ideas on paper. There's actually methods for getting to the end result that is desired. Um, a comprehensive plan helps you set the roadmap for the preservation of community character, community character and a desirable future development in your town. So where are we in the process? It's basically a five-step process. The first thing that we did was gather all the background information that we could find, whether it deal with transportation and infrastructure or community character and identity existing land use, we looked at the zoning map, we looked at all the environmental considerations. Um, a lot of the information is on your table in this document. We just put that there for your reference. We don't expect you to read all 67 pages while you're sitting there because we'd rather you be talking to each other. Um, but it is there in case we do need to look something up while we're, while we're talking. There's also a set of maps on the table that has all of the background information that can be put into map form. In, in map form. We also have these large maps on the table. There's an aerial map and underneath that there's a map with the parcels and the roads and everything like that. Uh, we have markers on the table so if you feel at any time that you need to draw on the maps to express something to someone um, else at the table, you can, you can do that. You can draw. Um, we have pads of paper on the table so if you need to take notes for yourself. And there's also um, a set of discussion questions on each table that the facilitators are going to be writing on when we're going through the questions. So we just ask that you leave those for the facilitators. But the, uh, the background information, we worked from January to April with the planning board, gathering that information and having the planning board look over that information to make sure we had covered all the bases and, and had some accurate information as well. Right now we're at the initial public input phase um, that is mainly taking place in May, but it's also ongoing through the the plans website, um, which if you haven't visited, you can get to through the town's website, which is townofbr.com. But there are multiple ways of participating, and you all are here for one of the three public input meetings. After we're done um, gathering the initial public input, we're going to take the background information, as well as all the information that you all have given us from these meetings and the surveys um, that you have been filling out, and we're going to come up with a draft plan. And that's going to take basically through June through December. We're going to have to, to write the plan. We're going to work with the planning board to make sure that we have accurately gathered um, the background information and the public input and come up with goals that make sense with what you all have said. And the planning board is going to help with that. Um, the, the next thing is public input on the draft plan. So after we have written it, we're going to come back to you all and say, 
did we get it right? Is this what you all said? Does this make sense? Um, and then once we do have it right, um, we're going to take it through the adoption process with the planning board and the town council and hopeful adoption um, February of 2012. So it's basically a year long process and we are still towards the beginning. Um, as far as tonight, our meeting format, we're going to go over four different topics. We're going to spend about 15 minutes on each topic. The first five minutes, we're going to spend giving you background information about that specific topic. And then we're going to spend 10 minutes at our tables talking with each other about specific discussion questions. So these are the topics we are going over. And then after that, we're going to have a short group presentation where you all at each table pick specific topics that have come up over and over again throughout the night and let the rest of us know what those are. And we'll see how many people had those same discussions at their tables. We'll end um, around 840, which has been more, running more like 845 at the meetings. Um, and we'll have a little bit of time at the end for those of you who are not comfortable going online to take the surveys, we do have two. There's the public input survey and the development preference survey. The development preference survey involves these posters over here. So if you want to pick up a form and, and take that, that survey before you leave tonight, you can do that, but you can also take it on the, the plan's website. Um, then after you're finished, and you can adjourn on your own. So that's sort of how we're going to um, be working on this tonight. This is the planning area um, that we are working on. This um, includes both the town limits of the, uh, the town of Bermuda Run as well as the what's called the extraterritorial jurisdiction. It is the blue line on those maps on your table as you can see it there. There's also the blue line here. Trust, you can try. I know it's got a little bit of a glare. Um, but basically, the, the, can everyone still see all right? Is that too dark? Or is that good? The hill? Okay. Um, the, the ETJ, the extraterritorial jurisdiction, is the planning and zoning jurisdiction of the town of Bermuda Run. It's approximately one mile outside of the original town limits, um, to, mainly to one side, but um, that, that's basically the area that could have been encompassed in an ETJ. So this is the planning area, this is the area we were talking about for the plan. Um, as far as the, the first um, topic we're going to be discussing is community identity and character. And for that, I'm going to introduce Kevin Marion um, with Fuller Architecture, and he's going to discuss that a little bit with you before we do our discussion questions. Hello, everybody. It's good to see uh, everybody come out tonight. It's great. You know, it's just kind of a bit for me. Um, community identity and character uh, is one of the ways that residents visually and conceptually relate to their community and how also the community is viewed by visitors and potential new residents uh, and businesses. And so it's a pretty important thing for people to come and see what your town is like and get a good initial uh, idea of what Bermuda Run is about uh, through visual things and graphic things. Um, there are two ways to develop uh, a community identity and character for a town. One is through branding and then the other is through uh, built uh, elements uh, in the, uh, or visual elements in the built environment, like buildings and signage and entrances and such. We're going to talk about branding a little bit first. It's basically marketing your town through graphic representation. Um, you can uh, you can do that through the design of your, your town logo, through uh, the design of your website. Um, <coughs> yeah, actually. Here you see some pictures of uh, branding opportunities, uh, your website, um, that's, a, that's the front page for a lot of people these days, that's what they look at first to research something, um, and they'll go to your website and see a lot of stuff about it, and um, you know, the, the graphics of it really tell uh, quickly what, what uh, the feeling in your town can be. Um, your town logo, and then entryways and such, like uh, your signage for your, for your country club, signage on your uh, town hall building, those kind of things uh, are important for, for branding your community to, to other people. Um, the other way, go to the next slide, is uh, through, through the built environment, the way things look, the way buildings look, the way landscape looks. Uh, Miller Landscape, we'll talk about landscape uh, elements later on. Um, 
the, uh, the buildings, uh, the way they look. Uh, you, can, you can reflect on historical elements. Uh, you can reflect on things in your current culture that are going on. Um, landmarks, historic preservation, the, the Bonston Barn right now, the Winmont Barn Project is a great example of historic preservation building reuse. Um, and then at the bottom, um, I mentioned uh, neo-traditional and neo-urbanist development. Uh, it's basically the philosophy on how to uh, develop a new town from scratch or how to take a sprawling suburban area and uh, bring those elements together and, and turn that into a new town. And typically those things are done over 15, 20-year process. That's kind of what we're talking about here. Um, here's some examples that are currently in your town of uh, what we found to be pleasing architectural elements. There's a little stone gazebo that's uh, in the country club, uh, some of the architectural detailing in, in uh, Kinderton Business. This is one of the buildings like the town hall's in. Saratoga Steakhouse has some nice brick detailing. And of course, the, the Windmark Bar is very recognizable. Um, uh, there are developments like this already, uh, either in process or they've been built and uh, have proven to be successful in North Carolina. Uh, we show a few examples here. Birkdale Village in Hendersonville, no, Huntersville, um, is, is a very successful development that's been completed for several years now. Uh, Cheshire Village uh, is in process. There's several buildings built there in several areas that have been developed uh, in Black Mountain. Um, and then there's a master plan for place called Afton Village. I show the master plan just to express the fact that all of these successful communities had a good, clear master plan. And it's very important if you want to achieve something in your 20-year plan that's going to uh, result in something like Burkdale Village or Cheshire Village, you really have to have a great master plan. This is the very beginnings of that process. And then uh, the last thing I want to quote is um, something from uh, the New Urbanist uh, philosophy is the fifth principle of new urbanism, and it's, it pretty much uh, gives a good idea of what the visual character of your town can do. Uh, emphasis on beauty, aesthetics, human comfort, and creating a sense of place, a special placement of civic uses and sites within a community, human scale, architecture, beautiful surroundings, nourish the human spirit. And I think next we have the questions, and I'll turn it back over to Aaron. Thank you. Um. Now we're going to go over the um, questions dealing with community identity and character. Um, the first one, what visual elements in the town of Bermuda Run help establish a favorable community identity? What things either currently help or would help to have to make the town of Bermuda Run have a strong character or identity? Um, number two, what visual elements in the town of Bermuda Run detract from the desired community identity? What things do you currently see that you think do not help the character identity of, of the town of Bermuda Run or its planning area. Um, number three, what are the most important characteristics to preserve as the town develops? Things that are here that you would like to see stay that actually lend to the, the look and feel um, and the vision for the town of, of Bermuda Run and its planning area. So um, what I'm going to ask is that the facilitators sort of fan out and go to a table and then we'll help you through
change transportation plan. Um, now, there is a map um, in the packets on your tables, if you, if you can't see it quite from here. Um, it shows the planning area from a more regional perspective, and you see all these, these lines and these numbers on here. Um, also, um, on the table, for, for those who would like to look in your little packet here, um, but that has the white bonding, on page 21 is the list of those transportation projects. Now, these are, are transportation projects that are already planned for, by, whether by the state or by um, part, um, which is the, the public transit. Really, I'm just going to touch on the, the first three or uh, four. Uh, number one and number two are the bridge replacements that have already been completed at 801 and, and I-40, as well as um, at the, the Yadkin River on 158. Um, number three is various intersection improvements, um, which could be throughout the town, but the, the, the one that's currently being discussed, of course, is the um, intersection 158 um, and, and the uh, near the soccer complex. There's some um, interesting intersection issues there, so that's, that's currently being discussed for that um, number three. And then number four is the Park Express bus route parking rod, which Park is showing sort of in the vicinity of the proposed medical complex. Um, they would expect to have that in by 2014. Now everything else, all these other numbers, are a time frame anywhere from 2016 on out to 2035. Um, and some of them have no time frame, like numbers nine and 10. So just keep that in mind when you're, when you're looking at, at that, particular, um, that particular list. There's also um, a existing blue way or cattle trail along the uh, Yadkin that is designated. And there has been discussion about a, uh, and, and a study done for a green way, which I will show you a map on in just a little bit. But that's, that's basically the transportation projects that are currently slated. Um, now that doesn't mean that there can't be more or some of those will go away, but that's just what's on record right now. Um, the walkable Bermuda Run Plan is something that the town adopted um, in March of 2009. This deals with uh, making sure there are different modes of transportation in the planning area, like sidewalks, bike lanes, um, in addition to your more traditional forms, which is driving. Um, the, the vision for that plan was to provide citizens of Bermuda Run and its planning jurisdiction with safe, effective, coordinated, and connected alternative transportation network consisting of sidewalks, bicycle lanes, shared use paths, and greenways. Now, um, that plan did leave the ability for the planning board to prioritize different segments of sidewalks or shared use paths that the town should work towards um, constructing. Um, but through this plan, through this process, and being able to ask people what sections they think are most important, and looking at the infrastructure already in place, we'll be able to include in the comprehensive plan an updated list of needed pedestrian facilities. So that's something we're, we'll be discussing at this meeting. And it's also on the public input survey, if y'all haven't already taken that. So that we're gonna do that with this process. This is the existing sidewalk network. You'll notice some overlap with this and the open space parks and recreation portion that will be discussed later because of how those um, different facilities are connected. But um, basically you'll see that Henderson Village has the most complete sidewalk network, in most cases on both sides of the street. Bermuda Run West has sidewalks on most of the streets, but not this section. Um, Henderson Commercial, has sidewalks in the developed portions, and as, as things were developed, the sidewalk is filled in. There's also a few sidewalk segments open on Peachtree Lane, as well as over, over the beach. <coughs> um, it's on one side of the uh, one that may be on there. But, um, so those are just the areas where there's existing sidewalk. You see the areas are very disconnected um, as far as their connection. So that's something that we need to keep in mind. Now, as far as the Greenway, Susan, Hatchell Landscape Architecture has been working um, on this, this, this is a draft map. Um, Clemens and the town of Bermuda Run as well as Forsyth um, and have been working on uh, this, this plan. And you'll see that um, she, her firm has included the potential sidewalk network connections as well as existing along with any um, greenway that might be on the Bermuda Run side of the river with potential future connections 
long enough to lose this bill, but um, mainly keeping the, the, the rest of the greenway on the Tanglewood side of um, the river. So that's just a, a draft map that um, is still being looked at. Now moving on to infrastructure and services, um, the utilities in, in the town. Uh, the town does provide limited water service to properties in the Bing Crosby Boulevard area of Bermuda Run, and it also provides sewer service to the main gated area of Bermuda Run. Davie County Utilities provides water and sewer service in all other areas uh, of the planning area, which includes Bermuda Run West and the commercial areas, um, and uh, as well as Kinderton. Uh, Long-term sewer capacity is an issue um, that the town has been working on, and then long-term water availability is not an issue. Um, the town does provide street maintenance, sidewalk, and street lighting to accepted town streets. Um, it does provide solid waste collection and leaf collection to single family residential customers at this time. It does pro provide additional maintenance services, including the maintenance of mail kiosks and um, residential entrances at this time, and provides planning and zoning services as well. Those are the services that the town currently provides. Um, now we're going to do the discussion question for transportation infrastructure and services. Um, the first question is what parts of the town's planning area have the most serious transportation issues? I'm sure we all know as we are driving through the planning area which areas we feel unsafe driving, fear for our lives, maybe we think it can be improved. Um, so that's what we want on number one. You can probably just list those off very quickly because you're familiar with them. Number two, what areas would benefit most from sidewalks? Where have you ever felt, gosh, it would be nice if I could walk from here to there, but there's no way to get there? We want to hear what you think those areas are. And then number three, what are the biggest infrastructure issues that affect the future development of the town? What, what things like utilities or streets, <coughs> um, any kind of infrastructure do you think could either help or harm the future development of the town if they are there or are not there? Um, so those are the three questions. If you will turn into your cables and discuss with your facilitators. We're going to spend about 10 minutes on this as well.
buildings, one is actually vacant at this point, but it is an industrial building. Um, as far as how that breaks down into percentages, 34%, about a third of the land in the planning area is currently vacant. And a third is also used as single family residential. And 22% is used as open space and recreation because of the size of uh, golf courses. It's a higher number than what you normally see. 4% um, of the property in the planning area is used for commercial. Now this is the zoning map. You also have that in the map on your table. Um, the, the zoning ordinance and um, its associated zoning map was adopted back in 2005. Um, the area in yellow is called Club Residential. That includes Bermuda Run and Bermuda Run West. Um, the orange areas are residential mixed zoning districts, which mainly includes Henderson Village, the property next to it, and the residential properties down Yadkin Valley Road. Um, the pink areas, the areas of the commercial mix, the red is general business. Um, that's your more intense commercial uses. Most of that area is currently vacant. That is what it is going to be. And then the green is open space, which is intended for larger residential lots as well as farm land. Um, so those are the zoning districts. Now the town center, which is this purple area, is that, of course, like I said, was designated in 2005, and that was intended to be um, a, a town center area. And um, John Fuller with Fuller Architecture is going to talk about that here in a little bit. But as far as the um, existing zoning breakdown, about a third is zoned club residential. 20% um, of the planning area is zoned for commercial mix, 8% is for general business, uh, RM is 15%. basically some study of that area and what could the possibilities be there. And I'll go over that in just a moment. Um, first, I wanted to say, you know, what is a town center? Um, in a traditional town like Moxville, which most of you have probably been through, um, you know, it has a defined center. It's got a court square. It's got the courthouse there, and it's got uh, some key businesses and restaurants and some things. Uh, it's a very defined kind of thing, and, and it grew through There are um, you know, things like Burkdale Village, which was a planned kind of community, like Kevin talked about. Um, Bermuda Run is, is different. It, it, it is a town. It's a, a, a growing town. There's a, there's a lot of things here. Uh, but there is no identifiable uh, town center at this point. Um, and so it, it, it actually gives you a, a, a creative advantage to be able to come together and, and determine um, Character that Kevin talked about um, and the town center um, area can have, have a great impact on that. Um, 
the, uh, the study that we did in 2005, Erin, um, if you can go to that next slide, uh, these are images that we created during that process. And there's a map right in here that we have that, that uh, is basically this map that you see up here. Um, there were two different things that we studied. One, I'm going to give you an orientation here. This is Interstate 40, uh, going south on 801. The <coughs> bank is right here. Um, the um, 801 gate is in the run is right here. So what we were doing was studying this portion of land that was designated in the ordinance in the, in the plan as a uh, town center district. So we, we took that and looked at possible One, one key thing that we saw, which a lot of people have discussed in some of these um, discussions that we've had over the last week, uh, is a connection from 801 to 158. We thought that was key uh, in order to uh, soften the traffic. Uh, you know, if you're coming 801 uh, towards the intersection, you could turn left and go over and cut through. So that, that was a key thing that, that came out of that. Um, but also just looking at different areas and how things could lay out. Um, you can see here, this was a 3D image that was done uh, of the entrance gate. The cross from the one gate and then from the run. That, would, uh, that gate is right here. Uh, the intent was a boulevard that came off of that that cut through over to 158. And this just shows the beginnings of what might be able to happen in a little park area here where there's an existing uh, pond uh, and some wild things that might, might occur. Um, so those are the things that happened when we that study. The, uh, the other thing we did was a, a study, a more intense study along uh, 801, um, basically this stretch of property through here uh, to see what the 801 corridor might uh, look like and, and, and develop as. So we looked at that, talking about sidewalks and how the buildings might set back, how much access to 801 you would want to have, and, and those kind of things. So that was a study that was done as well, just to see how that might, might uh, lay out. So, um, Aaron, I'm going to turn it back over to you, and I guess we'll go through the questions. Thank you. Um, just to let you all know, uh, the presentation that was done as a result of that charrette and, and study, um, those are all on the tables as well. They have the, um, the, the uh, little stone gazebo on, on the front, but um, you can look through those and sort of see what some of the drawings were from that study. As far as the questions about land use, growth management, and town center, um, the first question, actually the first two questions, um, what types of development should the town encourage? What types of development should the town discourage? So it should be just a quick list, what you want to see more of, what you want to see less of, what you don't want to see any of. Um, <coughs> those two questions. Number three, if you were a visitor to Bermuda Run, what, the town of Bermuda Run, what area would you consider the town center? Um, just your gut reaction on that. Number four, describe the types of uses or features that should be in a town center. Think of more, the more traditional town centers you've been in, the town centers that you think, or downtowns you think are successful, and tell us what you think it needs to have to be a successful town center. Um, it should have restaurants or retail, or it should have second story apartments, or it should have enhanced landscaping or unified signage, things like that. Number five, if the last one describe what a town center should look like, just the types of things that you think you should see um, in the town center. So I'm going to turn you back into your tables with your facilitators. We're going to take a few extra minutes to answer more questions. We'll take about 12 minutes. Okay. Okay. Should the town center encourage? Okay.